As we approach the edge of the old highway, my eyes settle upon a small mound of dirt with a carefully placed stone on the center. I'd walked down the stretch of Route 65 about a dozen times growing up, and have seen this before, but was never curious enough to investigate. There's something about it that's drawing my attention, and then I realize why. The dream from last night. The grave. That's the spot. I stop. The other's still walking ahead. They're following the road now back to town, or at least until we get to the railroad crossing and then we can follow that. I look back to the mound of dirt and am compelled to approach it. Without really thinking, I'm on my knees. Dig. What? What? Just do it. Next thing I know, I'm scooping the tips of my paws through the packed soil, digging up dirt and tossing the clumps aside. I don't know why I'm doing this. I close my eyes, trying to snap out of it. It doesn't help, and soon there's this musty smell in the air, like the inside of an old attic. I've managed to dig about a foot down into the earth so far, and the smell is only growing stronger. At about two feet down, something solid touches my fingertips. I keep going, dusting off dirt around whatever it is. The surface is curved and cracked in places, like pottery. Even before I get all the dirt off, I have a hunch of what it is. Two empty sockets stare up at me, and I stare back. Hello? A voice plays in my head, much more profound than I've ever heard it before. Ah. Uh, <sighs> to all this town, to end up here. The voice almost sounds like it sighs, then goes silent. Are you the guy in the grave? I ask the voice, which rings more clearly with each passing word. The way he sounds, it's like he's right here, despite the unnatural cadence. The voice in my head? I whisper to the skull, compelled to touch it. Any skin or fur has long since rotted away and the head itself is a yellowed ivory color. His clothes, from what are visible, are in tatters, but the remnants of a button-up shirt and suspenders can still be seen. The voice doesn't respond, so I ask another question. Who are you? A tumbleweed rolls by along the road in front of me, the others getting further and further away. Instead of responding, I feel myself begin to dig further down, scooping out a few more mounds of dirt until something leather and small can be seen. A hardy little wallet with a snake emblem pressed into the center. Flipping it open again, several business cards and dollar bills practically dissolve in the exposed air, though there is a plastic ID card in the back. It's a driver's license, clearly decades old, with the faded ink of several stamps covering most of it. What text can be seen is in that old timey typewriter font. I wipe my thumb across the surface, wiping away the dirt and grime. Samuel Ayers, date of birth 1890. There's a little picture of an elderly pale feline with stark reddish looking eyes that remind me slightly of Leo's. He looks haggard and sad, ancient really, a relic of another time. The man from my dreams. I should be terrified, but again I still feel disconnected. A passive viewer who can only sometimes speak without any control. They know I feel. I managed to swallow, peering into those sockets like they were looking back at me. I've never met a ghost before, I remarked quietly. I'm not a ghost. Then what are you? Another drawn out silence. Though this time, I waited out. Maybe. Maybe something like that thing on my radio. In the van. Just older. And changed now. It's gone, but I'm still here. Clinging to you like a lifeboat in open water. We've been together for some time. Didn't see one another for a while, but you came back. They always come back. Together? I... I don't... I trail off, trying to wrap my head around what he means, 
and what's really happening. I lean back some, feeling less resistance on my movements. I feel weird. Like I'm not really here. You've felt this way for a while now. It always happens like this, over time. Here it's just a little stronger. With me. My gaze is pulled down to the license in my grip. Again, I read the name. Samuel Ayers. He goes quiet for a moment, then speaks up again. With... him. His voice falters, a strange conveyance of emotion in his otherwise stilted, monotone presentation. I speak up again. There's something wrong with me. It's like... I'm not doing things on my own anymore. You're not. I'm with you. You are indecisive by nature. What? How? I choose. That doesn't make any sense. Why are we connected? How do I make this all go away? He says nothing, but I can hear him rumbling, stirring. At least 15 seconds pass before said stirring turns into words. You came back to find the truth. Well, that's what you told yourself. You've known it all along. You just bury it over and over again. Each failing, uncomfortable moment of horror. You can't face anything. You're just like him. The man with the hat that's always too tight. Brain splattered on fresh grass. Pine needles. No whimpering child. I... I don't... You are weak. You are pathetic. There's a pause, and again his tone shifts. A deviation from his uniform speaking pattern. His voice sounds softer, distant, like an echo of something said far away. Be safe, kid. 